Hot take. SARS-CoV-2 and other viruses are the most experienced Among Us players in the world. I mean, they've been infiltrating systems and killing crew for hundreds of millions of years, and sure, the game they play is slightly different, but surprisingly not by much. So how do they do it? Let's start. So first, just to dispel some misconceptions, viruses don't just go in, kill everything in sight, and brute force their way through, because they would lose. You see, if your cells find a body and can associate it with the virus, they will go to the nearest meeting room, button, and vote on the evidence, just like in the game. Sure, meetings will look a little different, but the purpose is largely the same. If everyone agrees to eject the imposter, that generates a very specific and very strong immune response, at which point the imposters have usually lost. Needless to say, if you're a virus, you want to stop this at all costs. The first strategy is actually a pretty natural idea. If the crew can't find the body in time, meetings don't matter. So kill quickly, kill discreetly. But this isn't as straightforward as it seems. In real life, all crewmates have very sharp sus meters, in the form of these carefully evolved receptors that specifically target viruses. If the victim becomes aware, there's lots of things they can do to delay kills significantly, giving your other detectives more time. So how do viruses get around this? One way is to block their victim's vision. By preventing the victim from noticing anything sus until it's too late, the viruses can often land some very smooth kills. But lights isn't the only sabotage it can do to disrupt crewmates. For example, influenza can intercept crewmates' internal instructions, making it so that they're pretty much paralyzed. Coronaviruses, on the other hand, often just block your protein factories directly, which has the same effect. Even after the kill, some viruses make proteins that clean up evidence too. Sadly though, this is not a mechanic in the game. Yet. Another way to kill discreetly is to do it in sparse locations. You know how sometimes bodies just sit in electrical for ages, not being found? Well, viruses know too. Rabies, for example, first travels innocently through your nerves to your brain, where your immune system is of course the least active, before doing any killing. And when it does, you're pretty much screwed. So when and where you kill are both obviously very important, but as experienced players will tell you, just as important is who you kill. Because there's a very good reason why by the first meeting, certain streamers tend to be already dead. Which brings us to strategy number two. Neutralize detectives first. When it comes to finding bodies and presenting evidence, your most important detectives are your dendritic cells and macrophages. Of course, SARS-CoV-2 targets them both. Based on pretty recent data, dendritic cells seem to just get locked on and killed directly, which is of course the most straightforward approach. But the COVID solution for macrophages is much more subtle. Coronavirus first distracts them from being useful at meetings, while tricking them into releasing panic signals that confuse other crew, and maybe even using them as chaperones to other organs. Of course, before killing them. Though your reporters aren't the only targets. During your crew meetings, there are players who consistently take the lead on understanding information and directing other crew. These are your helper T-cells. And they are so important to crewmate victory conditions that killing only them is a totally viable imposter strategy. The most well-known user of this strategy is, as you may know, HIV. HIV is so good at detective-specific killing that it practically always succeeds, making it so that literally any other imposter teammate can then easily win. Surprisingly, SARS-CoV-2 also uses this strategy fairly well. By disabling a subtype of helper T-cell, meetings often can't even get called. For example, here's a rare photo from your internal meeting rooms. You can see the green blobs here, which are the normal ongoing meetings. And since this is a normal patient, everything is going pretty smoothly. But here, this is a case of severe COVID. As you can see, there's nothing productive going on. And this leads to pretty bad outcomes, but fortunately we only see this in about 20% of hospitalized patients. So killing all your detectives is certainly one way to win, but against a very coordinated crew, it's not always successful. However, for the imposter, there are other options. Even the detectives that can't be killed can still be fooled. And this brings us to strategy number three. Marinate the detectives. Marinating in real life works the same way as in game. For many of the detectives, if they either see the same players constantly and aren't killed, or try to suss them but fail, they become less reactive over time. 
We're actually pretty lucky that this policy exists, since otherwise we would actually third imposter all the time, or in other words, get deadly autoimmune disease. But because we do this, many viruses like HIV, Hepatitis B, and Herpes can survive indefinitely by just killing crewmates very slowly and very specifically, such that your immune system never gets enough traction. Honestly, it's a very good strategy. After learning about it, I had some pretty good success too, but just a warning, it does make a lot of players angry after the game. Which, I mean, what do you expect? You are literally imitating an STD. Coronavirus actually goes one step further. Because what's better than crewmates not voting for you? That's right, crewmates voting for each other. And that is our final strategy. Get the detectives to kill each other. This is what many think is the key to what makes SARS-CoV-2 so dangerous. By its unique way of interacting with your crewmates, SARS-CoV-2 tricks them into releasing a mixture of signals that not only confuse detectives, but also triggers nearby cell death. One study put coronavirus in a tank with various immune cells, weighted, and isolated only the immune response. Then, they put that in a separate tank with just macrophages, which as you recall are your main reporting detective. So the researchers come back a while later, and what do you know, 70% of the macrophages are dead. That, my friends, is some incredible third impostering. But yeah, this is mostly what destroys your lungs. However, the most interesting part of this strategy has to do with these guys called neutrophils. So, neutrophils are critical for dealing with larger imposter classes, like bacteria or parasites, and one effective strategy they have is to sacrifice themselves in a one-for-one -one trade, which by the way is usually good for the crewmates. And they do it in an extremely, extremely metal way. They literally approach the imposter, slice open their own nucleus, throw their DNA as a lasso, and bombard the area with literally bleach. So given how powerful this attack is, you'd think it'd be pretty tightly controlled and only saved for the hardest of accusations. But somehow, coronavirus can still trick neutrophils into one for one your crewmates in this way. As you can imagine, it causes utter chaos. Good for the virus, not good for you. So that's pretty much it for the strategies we know so far. And well, if you're like me, you're thinking, wow, that was pretty cool. Okay, we're kind of screwed, aren't we? Well, here's the good news. Even though SARS-CoV-2 does use pretty big brain strategies, your crewmates still win a huge majority of the time, which really speaks to how awesomely evolved you are. Hooray, go you! But of course, the best way to win real life among us is still not to play. Or just be a llama. Anyways, I hope y'all learned some useful imposter tips, or like at least facts about how viruses kill you. Though keep in mind, viruses aren't the only successful imposters. There are of course others, each with their own unique playstyles, strengths, and weaknesses. If you want to hear about any of them next, let me know in the comments. Anyways, thanks for watching, stay six feet apart, except from this button, I'll see you later.